Sex, porn, love addiction is all about self-soothing to manage your emotions. It got set up back in the childhood development years. It's just not about sex. It's not about porn. It's all about the repeated use has set up the physiology to crave those dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, self-manufactured drugs in the body. It's impacting women, men, children aged 10 to 75 across all the age ranges, the sexes, the cultures the professions. It increased exponentially during COVID lockdown and impacting so many lives. The Kairos Centre has created the first online comprehensive sex porn love addiction. It's a video on demand recovery program which you can access from anywhere in the world and begin to see identifiable changes just within six weeks of beginning this weekly program. Kairos means your appointed time. Isn't it your time to reclaim your life? Bring colour back to life without shame. Click the link below and begin your journey. You owe it to yourself and to others. Creating new thinking, your cognitive. Remember we talked about CBT, cognitive behavioural therapy, and that would become the first part of the work. Right at the beginning, we want to look at your thinking. Because your thinking, the things that you are habitually, regularly churning around in your thoughts, albeit in the unconscious throughout your day, will become the behaviour that you go on to act upon. So your cognitive, more than just your thinking, the things that you're churning around processing in your brain is going to become the behaviours that eventually you go and act upon. So there's something about changing your thinking, challenging your thinking is the significantly important part of the work, the first part of the work in any recovery program. And so creating new thinking and thereby new neural pathways, neural pathways the behaviours that you have repeatedly, repeatedly, habitually done that will have come out of your thinking. So repeated patterns of behaviour become etched on our brains until they feel like an automatic and almost instinctive response. Therefore, to change those behaviours, you've got to erase what's been programmed into your brain and rewire your brain. For example, and this is a little bit trite, this example, but if you eat chocolate every time you're stressed, you'll create a neural pathway which creates that pairing that I talked about in your brain. If the emotions of stress, then I eat chocolate when I feel stress, I eat chocolate. When I feel stressed and upset, I eat chocolate. The two become paired together and you've now created that neural pathway so much linked to when I feel, this is what I do. When I feel, I do. Paired up to create the neural pathway. And so the instinctive response of the body, automatic, almost in the autonomic system, you don't have to think about it. When I feel stressed, I instinctively have a sense of wanting to eat chocolate because they've got paired up together. Can you see how the pairing is going to take place, particularly early on in childhood development between when I feel this is what I do, when I feel this is what I do. Over time, that pathway becomes stronger and stronger. Every time you do it, it's getting stronger and stronger. So that every time you're stressed, you'll automatically associate it with the reward of chocolate. Or even if it's not a reward, a way of feeling better. Moving out of one feeling state, a negative feeling state, into a more positive feeling state. So if you want to give up chocolate, There are two things you need to do. Firstly, you must not reach 
to the chocolate when you feel stressed. No matter how stressed you get, you've got to find a way not to reach for the chocolate. Because each time you feel stressed and you don't reach for the chocolate, you're starting to break down the neural pathway. But we've got to find some alternative behavior. One thing that I say about any change process, compulsion or addiction recovery, you can't just stop an old repeated pattern of behavior and not put something else in place. Otherwise the brain will find a substitute. So we need to find a positive pattern of behavior to take its place. Your brain will have become programmed to act out when you feel the trigger that's appropriate for you. And it's what you have been doing repeatedly, repeatedly. The hamster wheel, it's just programmed automatically to just do when you feel. It's like a train that is stuck on just one track. So from now on, you've got to change it. Whenever you experience a trigger, you need to force your brain to think and act differently, to switch tracks. Your thinking train will try to head down the same common usual track and it's gonna head for the same crash. And despite heading for the same crash, you still get up and do it again another time. But with help, in this document actually, interestingly enough, it talks about willpower. I don't really believe in willpower. For me, willpower is something about gripping the arms of the, ship, of the chair and I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. That can only get you so far. It can get you through a few days maybe, but willpower is gonna run out of puff. And at some point, you're gonna do it again. So we need some tools and that's what this recovery program is, helping to move you from willpower to some concrete solid tools to help you in your recovery. Neural pathways, you need to understand them really well. Your cognition and its involvement in acting out, you need to understand very well. So this really was just a reminder, your cognition, your thinking is really important because your thinking is going to lead you to the behaviours and then the repeated, repeated behaviours create the neural pathways. And that keeps the addiction in place. I want to cover a really important topic about helping you to better understand the core beliefs that exist in your life, which you may not be entirely aware of and which you may not have bought into. What do I mean by that? Well, let me explain a little about core beliefs. Core beliefs come out of CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. So the underlying theory behind CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, suggests that we have three levels of cognition, you now know cognition, more than just thinking. And those three levels of cognitions are core beliefs, intermediate beliefs, automatic thoughts. I'm going to give you the most basic rudimentary commentary on each of those three before I move on to give you the exercise which I want you to do to see if you can flush out if you can find your core beliefs that you perhaps have bought into and have had free reign in your life 